Until now we discuss how a job is submitted, now we'll discuss how a task is scheduled. For scheduling a task, you use an abstract task scheduler class. This class is used by job tracker to schedule tasks on task tracker. This class uses one or more job in progress listeners to receive notifications about the jobs. It also uses cluster status class to get the information about the state of the cluster. It has following methods, start, terminate and refresh. Start is called once a task scheduler class is created, terminate is called when it's deleted. To get a list of jobs in a particular queue, you call get jobs method. The most important method of this class is assign task. This method is called by job tracker and the task scheduler based on its internal logic and cluster status. It returns the list of tasks that are to be run on the given task tracker. There are various implementation of this task scheduler class. Hadoop uses the implementation that is specified by the property mapred.jobtracker.taskscheduler as its particular scheduler. So you can also go ahead and implement uh, this task scheduler abstract class and uh, specify your class name uh, with this property and Hadoop will use your particular scheduler instead. By default, Hadoop uses job queue task scheduler, which is a FIFO scheduler. Uh, FIFO is an abbreviation for first in first out. Uh, essentially, the logic says if there's a queue and the, the job that enters that queue first is processed first. Okay, that is first uh, job in is processed is first job out. However, the logic is slightly more complicated than that. Uh, there are multiple queues uh, in this scheduler and each of those queues has jobs of different priority. That is, there is one queue for high pri very high priority job, there is other queue for high priority job, there is other queue for medium uh, priority jobs and so on. The priority of a job is specified by user using a property mapred.job.priority. The logic is pretty simple. Okay. Uh, the scheduler first picks a queue with the highest priority and then uh, uses a FIFO logic within that queue. That is the job that was entered first inside that queue is processed first. Now let's, let's look at the job queue task scheduler in more detail. Since uh, it extends task scheduler abstract class, it has to implement all its method. Okay, in particular assigned task. So as we looked at in job submission as a job is added inside the queue the queue manager notifies all its listeners and uh, one such listener is there inside the job queue task scheduler so it receives a callback method called as job added and the job in uh, progress based uh, internally maintains a mirror data structure of this queue and it updates it is queue when it receives that callback method. So now look, let's look at the most important assigned task method. Okay, so job tracker calls assigned task on job queue task scheduler. Inside this method, you first calculate the available map slot using this formula. Uh, the logic, uh, the logic of this formula is pretty simple. You, uh, you the available map slot is a difference between the current map capacity and the number of running maps on that given tracker. Okay, for calculating the current map capacity, you multiply the load factor by the total map capacity. And the load factor is calculated using this formula. The other two uh, quantities, that is the total uh, map capacity and the number of running maps are found using the uh, class task tracker status. You can think of this class as an analogous class to cluster status. So now that you have uh, the number of available map slots, you get the job queue. Okay, uh, you get a job queue by calling job in progresses listeners uh, method called as get job queue. Job in progress. When you call this method, job in progress listener. 
uh, outputs a synchronized queue and then you process uh, that queue in a FIFO logic that is the first uh, first entry in that queue is processed for hence this for loop okay now let's look at how the job in progress listeners uh, outputs a synchronized queue to assign task method okay so logic was is uh, as it was discussed earlier that is you process the jobs inside the higher priority queue first to do so it maintains a map and a fifo job queue comparator okay uh, for more details you can look at the code of uh, job in progress listener inside these two for loops you first find the task that you need to run you do you do so by calling the method find new map task of the class job in progress remember that job in progress has uh, the data structures uh, reduces maps setups and cleanup which are arrays of task in progress you also have a map of node and list of task in progress to run on that particular mode node uh, which is specified by non running map cache so the method find new map task uses this data structure and determines which task it should schedule okay so logic or inside this is very simple first you look at uh, whether there is a task uh, which has most failures and you while doing so you don't take into account the locality information okay but you make sure that that task had not been failed on that particular machine okay so that is you refer to job in progresses field maps data structure if there is no such task then you look at uh, job in progresses uh, non running map cache and you return the non running task you but using the locality info that is the node okay if there are no failed maps or no non running task then you return a speculative task speculative task is a simple concept that was introduced in google's original map reduce paper so uh, this uh, there are, they uh, they found that there are certain tasks that took a lot of time to finish and they call them as stragglers and uh, to to avoid that they whenever they found a straggler they started a parallel task which did exactly the same computation as the straggler and then on a different machine of course and they use the output of the whichever uh, task finished first and they deleted the other task okay the so the pa parallel task that they they run is is what we refer to as speculative task then once you get this task you are added to an uh, data structure called as assigned task and you also make sure that uh, there are some free slots in cluster for future uh, speculative tasks you do so uh, for reducers as well that is you have this two for loops for reducers okay wherein you calculate available reduce slots and then iterate for each for the given job queue then you return the assigned tasks data structure and the job tracker then has to schedule the tasks that are inside the assigned task data structure now we have discussed uh, job queue task scheduler uh, and let's move on to uh, two extremely popular schedulers okay that is facebook's fair scheduler and yahoo's capacity scheduler before we do that let's look at what are the problems for the default scheduler provided by hadoop um, first it does not support preemption so if there is a, a if there is a job that 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 comes first and that has higher priority but it's taking extremely long to finish right uh, in that case a shorter a, a task of lower priority cannot preempt that task you know so as to uh, finish faster you just have to wait you can also use the priority uh, 
in a wrong way that is certain users will can you know try to uh, just schedule task of higher priorities and uh, upper and and a well intentioned user will prob will probably choose a right priority but his jobs will never run because the malicious user is always running higher priority task and the fifo logic says you should always process the higher priority task right so this is especially bad for production clusters that is why uh, facebook and yahoo came up with their own schedulers okay goal of facebook's fair scheduler is to provide fast response time for small jobs and guaranteed service level for production jobs let's look at the uh, logic of fair schedule at a very high level um, the fair scheduler maintains uh, and data structure called as pools and uh, in in our example we have four pools and two of those pools are production job uh, production pools okay so there is a certain guaranteed service level for those uh, production pools to specify the uh, service level that is the minimum share inside pool.xml which we'll talk about later uh, so each pool each of those production pools has some minimum share this pool is specified uh, that it should receive at least 30 uh, 30 slots and the, the fourth pool uh, uh, says that it at least has to receive 40 slots okay so that's and our fair schedule has to guarantee that it receives this service level in our example let's assume that the first pool has one job the second pool has two jobs and the last pool has only one job the third pool has no job in our example so uh, for doing scheduling we will assume that the cluster has 100 slots and we have to allocate them uh, a slot is you can treat slot as a representative of resources and resources for a cluster can be cpu memory disk io network and a slot is representative of that okay so while scheduling you have to ensure that you you distribute this resources fairly and that is what facebook's fair scheduler does so the fair scheduler first makes sure that it it at least gives 40 slots that is the guaranteed service level to the production jobs and the remaining slots that are that is 60 slots are distributed equally among the other two pools you don't give uh, slots to the third pool because it has no jobs and hence it does not need any slots okay so the first job receives 30 slots and the job inside the production receives 40 slots for the two jobs inside the second pool you distribute you again distribute uh, the slots equally that is the first job inside second pool receives 15 slots and the second job receives uh, 15 slots as well let's look at some additional features of fair scheduler the you can specify job weights for unequal sharing based on priorities or size that is you uh, in the second pool you could provide job weights to ensure that the uh, the first job receives 20 slots and the second job receives 10 slots instead okay so you can also provide limits for uh, the number of running jobs per user or per pool to use fair scheduler you first make sure that hadoop can find its jar hence you copy the jar of fair scheduler inside the lib directory and then you point the mapred.job tracker.task scheduler to the fair scheduler class remember i told earlier about pool.xml which specifies the minimum share you you have to uh, there is a property for that as well and you have to point the path to that pool.xml uh, using the property mapred.fairscheduler.allocation.file okay there are other entries inside this pool xml but we'll just ignore for this presentation um, yahoo's capacity scheduler also tries to solve the same problem that is uh, it makes sure that there is some amount of fairness of for the jobs inside the production cluster 
and no no but no one malicious user tries to capture all the resources of the production cluster so yahoo's capacity scheduler is very similar to the fire scheduler uh, but it means uh, maintains queues instead of pools and queue share a certain percentage of cluster it is important to know that in a queue right you can have jobs of different priority so this is how it's different than the fifo scheduler um, you can think of queue as uh, you know a, U, a queue for certain uh, class of users so uh, just like a pro production pool uh, there is certain capacity that is or a certain service level that is given to that particular pool you, uh, you can think of certain uh, queues uh, to be of production queues hence a certain guaranteed uh, service level is given to that particular queues okay inside a queue uh, you have a fifo scheduling just like fifo scheduler and uh, since you have fifo scheduling the scheduling of capacity scheduler is slightly more deterministic than the fast scheduler of facebook that's why you know a lot of people when they are uh, running uh, a very huge cluster they might prefer capacity scheduler instead of fast scheduler for the deterministic property however unlike the above two scheduler that is fifo and fair uh, capacity schedulers provide support for memory based scheduling and preemption so memory based scheduling essentially says that you know you can provide that a certain job can be run on a certain task scheduler only if its memory uh, it has memory more than you know like 500 gb or 500 mb or certain thing right so you can specify a certain memory value if the if the amount of memory free, amount of free memory uh, is less than that particular value don't schedule that particular task this just ensures that you know there are less failures preemption is an extremely important uh, uh, point uh, we need preemption because uh, you know you can have certain jobs uh, that you know certain long running jobs that that were started for a you know and that have been running for a very long time and that have just been taking the entire cluster and this long running jobs you can have this long running jobs for various reasons one such reason is that it's just reading a bad you know uh, bad file or there is some problem in the code or you know one of those valid reasons uh, and in in that case you don't want the production cluster to be clogged because of those tasks and in this case uh, the house capacity scheduler will make sure that uh, it will preempt uh, that task and ensure there is some fairness among the jobs well that's it thank you